Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're gonna talk about cognitive functions. The easy way. Yeah, through this we've been learning about this all wrong. A lot of the information floating around on the internet is wildly inaccurate. And some of the things that we hear are not as you have been told. Now, one of the things I want to address is this. We all might have seen this chart on the internet floating around letting you know which functions you use the most and the least. Now this is a simplified version, it has nothing to do with Carl Jung, Carl Jung didn't make this, it's an interpretation that came with the MBTI. Still, it's one of the most widely quoted ways to learn about the cognitive functions, but through this video you will learn a better way, a way that will get you more in-depth information about you and your specific mind and how you work. Now, the way I see it is we have four cognitive functions that are native to us, four cognitive functions that give us flow, and 12 that don't. Now, if you look at the INFJ, it's introverted intuition and introverted feeling, intuition and judging and feeling and judging. Yes, note the addition of these NJ and FJ functions, as well as the NP and FP functions for the ENFP. I add eight new cognitive functions to explore deeper into the human mind, into how people think, into how people make decisions. Okay, now let's go back to the old version. Note that there's an argument here that you use this much NI, this much FE, this much TI, and this much SE. Note that not all INFJs use each cognitive function as much. Note that some have this NITI loop. Note that different INFJs use different functions differently much. Note that there are tests out there that tell you how much you use each cognitive function. And most of these show that some people who are ENFP might show unusually high amounts of introverted intuition or some INFJs may show unusually high amounts of extroverted uh, thinking. And all of this is just how it is. Like we develop through nurture, through school, through education, through work to use functions that are not ideal to us. And here are the ideal functions, the ones that give you the most energy, satisfaction, and purpose and passion and conscientiousness and openness. And you can use other functions, but not all of them are beneficial. Note that often how we develop some of these functions come to become more predominant than others. Look at this INTJ, for example. This INTJ might have developed to use a lot of introverted thinking, making them perhaps resemble more like an INTP or an ISTP perhaps, where others might have developed to use more introverted intuition or others might use more intuition towards the judging uh, aspect. And all of these can vary from person to person. That's very important to remember, it can vary. Now, if we look at overall uh, intuition and sensing, this means you can either use intuition in a way that is introverted or extroverted, or you can use it in a way that is judging or perceiving. Basically, you can use intuition in a way that comes from within, that is based on philosophy, existential musings, reflection about reality, how reality works, or you can use it in a way that is extroverted, based on what's happening around you, based on exploring patterns, making connections, seeing how things happening around you fit together. You can use the intuition in a way that is judging, which is speculative. What might happen in the future? What could happen if we did this or that or that? How could these two events come together? How can we combine all these ideas into one singular vision or concept? You can use it in a way that is perceiving, which is creative, which is how many options can I think of for this item? How many ways can we use this? What, how many ways can we interpret this statement? What can this mean? How can we look at this? From what perspectives? From how many different angles? The same goes for sensing. Sensing can be introverted, which is how have I done things before. Sensing can be extroverted, which is how are things happening right now. Sensing can be judging, which is about regulation and organization. How should I put this, inform this information in order? Or it can be used in a way that is perceiving, which is adapting, which is 
where do I need to be right now? Where will the danger be right in the next moment? What is the best place to stand? Where is the most comfortable place to be right now in this particular situation? So all of this shows variation and flexibility. All I'm advocating is flexibility and dynamism, seeing things from multiple perspectives, noticing that there are different ways to use different things. So you can use ISJ, you can use MENP, you can use ENJ, you can use ESJ. You have four different variations really, depending on your personality type, where ENFJs have a different intuition than INFJs because their intuition is typically still extroverted. INFJs have an intuition that is introverted. ENFPs have an intuition that is perceiving and INFPs have an intuition that is introverted and perceiving. So basically, it depends on your type, what you prefer, what you prefer. So what is it, What? how does this work? I'll get back to this in a second. First, let's talk about this GOG. I think this GOG helps people understand and come with a common misconception about in how we should think. Like the ideal is that uh, we should all strive towards this kind of, uh, balanced way of functioning. We should all strive towards having an equal use of all cognitive functions, developing our extroverted sensing and introverted thinking if we are INFJs, developing our introverted sensing if we are INFPs or whatever. But this has issues, this has problems. Typically, if you go towards this route, you do get higher logic than usual for an INFJ. You do get higher overall attention to your environment than the average INFJ. But you get lower energy and lower passion. You become less conscientious, which means you care less about how you do things and you become more sloppy with how you do things and you become less open-minded. You take in less information. You learn at a slower rate and you're more easily going to discard information or forget information. You become more forgetful, your memory declines, you have less fun. Intuition and sensing, it's all about like what your learning mindset is. So look at this meter for an example here. Basically note that there is a zero in the middle. So if you, the closer you are to balance, the closer, the less, the lower your energy is. The closer you go down, if you scroll down this gauge towards higher intuition or towards higher sensing, if you're a sensor, the more energy you get. Basically, you have to choose. You can't use both at once. And from neuroscience, this is pretty well supported. It's shown that if you use certain networks in the mind, you decrease the use of other networks in the mind. So you can't use two networks at once. You can't look both left and right at the same time. You have to choose. And if you try to do both at once, Basically, you get a blurry image. You don't really see enough. You basically start seeing less. You have less time to take in information and to value it and to use it in a smart manner. So this is something very important to think about. How much information do I want to think take in? How open-minded do I want to be? What is more important, to be both an intuitive or a sensor or to be a person that has fun, that has energy and that has an open-minded mindset? So here we see like, uh, how it could be like this is what I try to strive towards the ambition for me is flow which is energy passion purpose freedom from stress and from anxiety less neuroticism higher openness higher conscientiousness and overall less stress with intuition you get this kind of uh, as an intuitive you get this kind of learning mindset you get higher energy you get more fun but if you were a sensor the opposite would be true if you are a sensor forced to use intuition, your learning rate would decline, your energy would decline, and your sense of fun would decline. Sure, you would show overall higher use of intuition, but you would be like the bored kid in the classroom that sits and uh, be uh, like this, but doesn't really care about what's happening and feels very bored with it. And I think we've all been in this mindset. I think as an INFJ who goes towards that state of balance, what you're looking at is this person that has this okay, like hardened, this, they have this hardened, low energy, uh, low warmth, uh, low conscientiousness manner, which is like very oblivious, very nonchalant. But they sure they have attention and sure they have logic. But the question is, 
how, at what cost. That's the that's the important thing to remember. Now, you might still want to have a balanced use of this, but what I want to show you is this. Like, imagine that we have intuition in the top and we have sensing in the bottom uh, here. And then we have truth in the middle. Say a fact such as the sky is blue. The thing is, I don't believe there is any kind of information that you can only gain through intuition. I don't believe there is any form of information in the world that you can only understand or comprehend through sensing. I think that you can use intuition to gain the same information that a sensor can gain. An ISTJ and an INFJ can come to the same conclusion about what truth is, despite using different functions. An INFJ and an ESTP can come to the same conclusion about what truth is, despite using different functions and having different styles of learning. The sensor learns differently than the intuitive, and in the classroom we should all be advocating this. We should be talking about how to boost our intuitives, how to boost our sensors so they can learn more, so that they can perform better at the tests and that they can become better at the, yeah, so they can learn more overall. I want to talk also, make a brief step back to feeling and thinking. Feeling about and thinking is about overall how you perform at a task, your skill level, your passion for a task, your conscientiousness, how well you do at something, how good you want to do at something. 